The new regime seemed to spell the end for violence on the terraces. But despite this success, or maybe because of it, another sort of violence emerged that was altogether more sinister. The war on the terraces was to spill out onto the streets. In Portsmouth, the group behind much of the violence called itself the 657 crew. Hooligan gangs like these seem to have been their inspiration. This was West Ham's notorious intercity firm taking on the Red Army of Manchester United. Police raids on other gangs produced a frightening array of weapons, all evidence that the hooligans had to be taken seriously from wherever they came. Apart from the intercity firm and Red Army, there were the service crew in Leeds, the Blades at Sheffield United, the Zulu Warriors from Birmingham, the Chelsea Headhunters, the Millwall Bushwhackers, the Inside Firm of Southampton, and of course the 657. Psychologist Roger Ingham has closely followed the rise of so-called crews as part of a long-term study on football hooliganism. He believes they've added a dangerous new dimension to crowd control on match day. I think as far as events that happen in the ground itself during games, there's no doubt they've been very successful. The problem is, of course, that a lot now has been driven outside the grounds and a lot of the people that used to be involved in trouble in the grounds are now being very creative in, in planning ways of still having trouble either on route to the ground or, or even on days where there isn't a game. In Portsmouth, the 657 crew took its name from the Saturday morning train to Waterloo. Right from the start, they were to demonstrate they were no ordinary football supporters. The matches mattered little. The real excitement was in taking on rival gangs around the stadium, as the 657 admit. We've had fights at uh, Waterloo Station regularly with Millwall supporters over the last like five years. I mean, one Millwall supporter ended up with a fractured skull there. People have been slashed through standing ice. I've seen people have bricks thrown in the head, things like that. Trouble on the Portsmouth streets on match day has become a regular event. The police's biggest problem since the advent of the 657 has often been to identify the troublemakers because they seldom fit the popular image of the football hooligan. You can say that uh, they probably fall within the age, grade, age group of 16 to 40. Most of them are employed probably, um, holding down quite good jobs, earning quite good money. Um, the sort of person that you would pass in the street and not think anything of it. And yet on football match days, they, they change into something entirely different. You could say, um, perhaps the bank manager type is also included in the football hooligan list. They are they're from all walks of life, there's no doubt about it. The veneer of respectability masking the violence of the 657 was at its best in the June general election, when Martin Docker Hughes was nominated as the 657 candidate for Parliament. In the event, he mustered only 250 votes. To outsiders, it may have seemed a joke, but for the gang themselves, it was a good way to cock a snook at the establishment and show their strength. I'd just like to say thank you very much to all our supporters who turned out to vote for us tonight and in the future. Raising the £500 deposit, organising leaflets and posters, as well as staying within the complex electoral law, showed a level of organisation with disturbing implications, even if the tone of the campaign was tongue-in-cheek. After their excursion into politics, the 657 went back full-time to football. Pompey had just won promotion to the first division. The police knew that meant bigger crowds and potentially bigger trouble. When we looked at the fixture list that came out for this season, it was Chelsea, Southampton and West Ham in the space of about 12 days, each with its own particular problem, Southampton because it was a local derby, Chelsea and West Ham because they do have particular problems with their hooligan element, and as such presented a challenge to our hooligan element as well. The police fears proved well-founded. When Southampton visited Portsmouth on August the 22nd, trouble broke out on the streets. Among the innocent victims, this 21-year-old Pompey fan attacked with a Stanley knife on his way to Fratton Park. In this first interview, he asked not to be named for fear of reprisals. First of all, I was uh, being punched repeatedly by about five or six people, and then I got taken to an ambulance by my friend's, my friend's wife and uh, they told me I was slashed and so the ambulance. A hundred stitches I had to have all in all, 60 on the outside and 40 in. 
so they'll be parking all over the place no doubt. The events of that day were a grim reminder to the Hampshire police that football matches these days have to be treated almost as military operations. Two weeks ago we joined them for Pompey's most recent home game against league champions Everton. And we'll go on to the, the day started with a series of briefings on the special problems that hosting the northern team would present. Their colours are blue and white which aids in the confusion so we won't really know whether we're looking at our own fans or away fans unless we can identify them by higher firm numbers, names, etc. on the side. In fact, the police operation began weeks earlier. They'd even produced a video showing all the likely trouble spots and how to keep the rival fans apart. The task is made easier by precise information on the visiting supporters. As with every big match, it's an all-ticket affair, so the police know how many fans will travel south. They've sold a thousand tickets, 800 for these terraces and 200 for D section. And anybody who can do simple maths means that we can account for 400 by coach. There are no passengers that we know of by train. Nothing has left Liverpool since 8.30 this morning, headed for Portland. <coughs> so we've got something like 600 people coming by diverse means of transport. It's the private cars and vans that give the police their biggest worry. Today's hooligans don't travel by official coach or train precisely to avoid detection. Well before the match starts, the police move into position. But if they're well prepared, so too are the hooligans, and to a frightening degree. Portsmouth Summers Town Estate, where members of the 657 rub shoulders with ordinary Pompey supporters. All week, today's game has been the main topic throughout the pubs and clubs. The big question for most of them, who's in the team and whether they'll reverse Pompey's string of poor results. But for others, it's a different sort of action that's important. You could talk about five or six different fights on a Saturday with five different teams. You'd be going up north and they'd, someone would be waiting for you at Waterloo because of your reputation. You'd go on the underground of King's Cross, there'd be someone else around who'd heard of you and knew that you'd be travelling through King's Cross. Then you'd get to the game, whatever, up north, where you were going, and be fights there. Fights back in London at night, people knew you'd be coming back through London, be waiting for you. Well, I think it's just reputation. They, they go on reputation, we go on reputation, and it's trying to see who's best. I never stop the fact that rival supporters will fight. If you're brought up with a group of young geezers around your way and as the geezers are growing up they get into going to football and you're in with that group and you get into it. Two o'clock and the Everton fans begin to arrive. Police are waiting on the city boundaries to escort the coaches to the ground. Before they get out there's a warning wrapped up in a welcome. Welcome to Portsmouth. Just a few things before you leave the coach. One, it's very cold out there and I seriously suggest to you you remain on the coach until quarter past half past two when we will escort you round to the ground. The bit of the ground you're going in is very exposed and very cold and you're much more comfortable here. You're not going to go anywhere near a pub, your best bet is to stay here until about quarter past two and we'll take you in there. Not taking any chances, the police escort the Everton fans into the ground in batches. But pockets of them have escaped the cordon and headed for the nearest pubs in Milton Road. They're now on the 657's territory. The pubs and even the local cemetery have been ambush points in the past. Weapons have been hidden here for use the following Saturday. There's tension as the three o'clock kickoff approaches. Everton fans move out of the pubs and the 657 are waiting. But the police are also here with dogs, and trouble is avoided. The stray fans are shepherded towards the ground. Now all attention is at the gates. Stopping trouble during the game is the police objective here. Nearly every fan is frisked. At three o'clock, the kickoff. 
But the police problems are far from over outside Fratton Park. Hundreds of Everton fans have travelled down to Portsmouth without tickets. They now find they can't persuade the police to let them in. With the match so near and yet so far, they're furious. Well, what can we do, you know? Stand around. That's right, yeah. yeah. Look, look at Toast, yeah. say, you know, take your tickets off Toast. Well, we're not troublemakers. No, we're not, we're not troublemakers. Yeah. Well, we come down here, right? we support us. We have to support us club, right? We come down here, there's no tickets. Why? They'll lose, the club's going to lose money. I come from the Midlands. Well, I'm, I'm Everton supporters from the Midlands. What are you going to do if you don't get into the ground? Well, I'm going to fuck off home, aren't I? What else can I do? Otherwise, well, the, the police will come later on with the dogs and whatever, That's and if right, you're hanging yeah. around, they'll put you in a yeah. van and, and whip you away. In and, fact, and you've in done fact, that, yeah, you're in fact they here. told us, right, down the street, like they said, no more, yeah, the, otherwise they're going to arrest us. Yeah, clear off. Because they said, no way, or we're going to arrest you. With the match in full swing, the mood outside is ugly. Many of the fans simply can't understand why the police don't bend the rules. You know, there's 500 tickets that they haven't sold inside this ground, and the police have stopped them selling. And they can't the trouble, causing the flexion. The ticket-only policy was meant to stop trouble, but the police are now in danger of seeing it backfire badly. And they talk about football hooliganism. The police are the bleeding hooligans. One small trouble spot, but a potential flashpoint, and the police move in. I've just been over to the ticket office, and there are 500 tickets for sale over there. That is the problem. Because because the police have closed it down. There's going to be empty em, empty empty spaces on the terraces over there. Any 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 violences outside this ground, the police have manufactured them. They have because they've closed. They travel 400 miles, man, and watch us go sell tickets. I go to I go to away games all the time, and there's no problem getting into the ground. Is there not? It's all tickets. It's a club but it's a police order. It's a police order, isn't it? There's no problem getting into any any other ground. Wait a minute, that's the club make the rules, not the police. The police stop the tickets. There's 500 tickets in there. You stop the tickets. There are no tickets on sale. Stop. End of story. Sorry about that. It's a club rule. Police.